students and families. My name is Mrs. Bassett. I am a third grade teacher in Knox County at Bluegrass Elementary. In today's social studies video, we will be reviewing early American Indians in North America. We have two goals today. Our first goal is to review the geographic locations and customs of the Northeast, Southeast, and Plains North American Indians. Our second goal is to review the conflicts between American Indian nations. Let's look at your KCS at home packet. Find the section for third grade social studies. Today, you will begin by looking at a map of American Indians in North America. You will need to color the area where each American Indian cultural group lived in a different color. If you do not have different colors, then just shade them in with a pencil or draw symbols. Next, you will need to color the boxes in the map legend to match the colors you used on the map. I am going to read the text with you, but after you are finished with the video and are ready to do the lesson activities on your own, I would like for you to reread the text to yourself. Let's look at the paragraphs with the title Indigenous Peoples at First. After the Ice Age, people needed to adapt to their new environment. They did this by spreading out across North and South America. They settled in many different environments. This formed many different tribes and nations with many different ways of life. Depending on where they settled, the American Indians had to learn how to live in their environment and use their physical environment to meet their needs. Resources American Indians used. Shelter, trees, plants, ice, soil, or animals. Food, nuts, berries, soil, or animals. Clothing animal hides, or plant fibers. Next, you have a short writing activity. You will need to look back at the text and write about how the environment impacted the lives of American Indians in North America. This writing activity you will do on your own. Now we are going to review the customs of the Northeast Southeast and Plains Indians of North America. For each region, you will be watching a short video, reading a paragraph, and filling out a four square organizer about each region's customs. The organizer includes climate, natural resources, shelter, and clothing. All of the answers can be found in the paragraphs about each region. Let's start with the Northeast region. We will start with a short video about this region. We will now take a look at the American Indians of the Northeast. The well-known tribes in this region include the Iroquois and the Algonquin, but remember the focus of both the history and geography standard is on the way the environment impacted the lives of the people who lived there and not on specific tribes. The clothing of Northeast American Indian cultures was similar in many ways to their southern neighbors, but the longer and harsher winters necessitated a heavier reliance on warm animal furs. Clothing was typically made from animal skins, including moccasins worn on the feet. Clothing in this region was often decorated with paintings, embroidery, beads, or shells. Northeast American Indians also ate many of the same foods as Southeast Indians, including wild plants, deer, fish, and birds, and food they grew, such as corn, beans, and squash. Some groups within the region relied more heavily on agriculture, while others relied primarily on hunting and gathering. Much of the variation was due to the availability of fertile soil and wild game. A tribe's reliance on farming versus hunting had an obvious impact on their settlements. Groups that grew most of their food tended to live in larger, permanent settlements. Living in larger groups allowed for the work of maintaining and harvesting crops to be distributed, and also provided larger numbers of people to protect their fields and food storage from invaders. 
Groups that relied more heavily on hunting and gathering typically lived in smaller villages that required less protection. Some American Indians in the Northeast region, including the Iroquois, lived in longhouses. These houses ranged from 40 to 400 feet long, depending on how many families lived in the house. Walls within the longhouse created rooms for each family. Other tribes in this region, including the Algonquins, lived in wigwams. These homes were typically round, with a fire in the center, and housed only one family. Regardless of the shape of the home, they were made from wood and bark, which was easy to access in the heavily forested northeast region. Again, I am going to read the text with you, but before you do the Foursquare Organizer, I would like for you to reread the text to yourself. The Northeast North American Indians American Indians in the Northeast were known as the Eastern Woodland Indians. The climate has four changing seasons. There is lots of rainfall and heavy snows. They fished, hunted, and gathered food from the forest. They wore hides or skins of animals. Deer skin was popular in the summer and clothing made of beaver, and bear furs were worn in winter. Most Northeast Indians lived in permanent villages. They would often have a house for summer and a house for winter. They would build wigwams, a small round home made from young trees, or longhouses, rectangular wooden frame and a curved roof. Now let's look at the Southeast region. We will begin with another short video. In most cases, American Indians who lived in the Southeast had access to land that could be farmed, along with wild plant foods and game including deer, rabbits, raccoons, bears, beavers, squirrels, and a variety of birds. Thanks to a warm climate and long growing season, they grew several varieties of corn, beans, and squash. These three crops are often referred to as the three sisters because they grow particularly well when grown together. The fact that these foods could be easily dried and eaten later allowed people to leave their homes for longer periods of time to hunt, trade, or go to war. Southeastern American Indians living in coastal regions, including modern day Florida, also ate turtles, alligators, and fish. For the most part, Southeastern American Indians lived in semi-permanent settlements. Because game was plentiful and crops could be grown on the land, groups only moved if the land was no longer productive. Settlements were located on land with rich soil and near water sources. Most villages were small. There was some variation in the types of houses these groups lived in depending on the area where they lived. Most lived in homes that were framed using wood, river cane, and vines. These homes were typically coated with plaster and had grass thatched roofs or had shingles made of bark. Other groups, particularly those near tidal waters or subject to frequent storm surges, lived in homes with raised floors. Southeast Indian cultures used the resources available in their environment to make clothing. Much of this clothing was made of deer skin. Men typically wore a breech cloth and sometimes a shirt or cloak. Women wore skirts with cloaks. Animal fur provided warmth for the winter. Now let's look at the bottom of page two. The Southeast North American Indians. American Indians in the Southeast were also known as the Eastern Woodland Indians. The climate was warm and humid because it is close to the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. This region has four seasons. The summers are hot and winters are mild. Southeast Indians grew corn, beans, and squash. They also hunted, fished, and gathered berries and nuts. They wore clothing similar to the Northeast Indians. They made their clothing from deer skin. Men and women wore moccasins. American Indians in the Southeast lived in permanent villages. They had many different types of shelters. Winter houses used thatched roofs, circular house with a cone shape, 
and summer houses were known as wattle and dag, wood poles with a woven siding. For our last region, we will review the Plains region. We will begin with a short video. Now we will explore the Plains region and the American Indian groups that lived there. The Plains region stretches all the way from present-day Canada to present-day Texas. Among the best known of the tribes found in this region were the Pawnee, the Sioux, the Crow, and the Cheyenne. Similar to the Southeast and Northeast Indians, the Plains Indians primarily grew corn, beans, and squash, and hunted and fished. When horses were introduced in the area by Spanish settlers, following the movements of buffalo became easier, making buffalo a more reliable food source. This led many Plains tribes to give up the dome-shaped earth lodges that had once made up their permanent villages in favor of portable teepees that could be moved with the hunt. While bison provided an important food source, they were also useful in making clothing along with deer and antelope skins. Because the Plains region stretches so far, clothing varied by the climate. Farther north, men wore shirts, leggings, moccasins, and robes. Farther south, men would often leave the upper part of their bodies bare. Women typically wore long dresses, moccasins, and leggings. Clothes were often decorated with paintings, embroidery, and fringe, and battle regalia, including feathered headdresses, was important to the Plains peoples. Now find page three. Let's read about the Plains North American Indians. The environment of the Plains is very different than the Northeast and the Southeast. Land is flat and open. The area is mostly grassland with few trees. The climate is cool and dry. There is not much rain. Winters are cold in the north. Plains Indians gathered wild plants, fished, and hunted herds of wild animals. They hunted elk, deer, and buffalo. Plains Indians wore leather clothing made from deer skin. Men and women wore buffalo hide robes in winter to keep warm. Plains Indians lived in villages part of the year. They lived nomadic lives when they were hunting. This means they moved around. They made earth lodge shelters in villages or used teepees when hunting. You now have all of the information you need to fill out your organizers. Remember to look for text evidence. We are ready for our second goal of the lesson. We will be reviewing the conflicts between American Indian nations, including competing claims for the control of land. Let's read these paragraphs before we answer the questions. Be listening for what caused conflict and what caused cooperation. Look at the top of page four. Tennessee's tribes compete. American Indians living in the Tennessee area competed for natural resources. The Cherokee lived in the East Tennessee Appalachian region. Their territory included parts of Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Alabama. The Chickasaw lived in West Tennessee. However, both tribes hunted in Middle Tennessee. This often led to conflict. In the 1600s, the Shawnee built villages in Middle Tennessee. The Shawnee had conflicts with both the Cherokee and the Chickasaw. The Cherokee and Chickasaw even united to try to drive the Shawnee out of the area twice in the 1700s. Now you have two short answer questions. Number one, what caused conflict between the Cherokee and the Chickasaw in Tennessee? Number two, what caused cooperation between the Cherokee and the Chickasaw in Tennessee? Remember, you can find the answer to both of these questions in the text. Finally, I have created an extension activity. For this activity, you will go back in time. You are no longer a student in the year 2020. Instead, you are an American Indian living in Tennessee 500 years ago. Here's your task. On a blank sheet of paper, write a journal entry explaining 
how your physical environment influences your choices of what to eat, what to wear, and what kind of shelter you live in. Describe how you interact with other American Indian groups living in Tennessee. If you are interested in re-watching the videos included in this lesson, I have provided the links for them at the bottom of page four. That's it for me and your third grade social studies lesson for today. Remember to reread your text before you answer the questions. This will help you find text evidence to support your answers. I hope you have a great day.